In a futures contract where the underlying commodity is a U.S. Treasury bond, the counterparty who has the short position and therefore will be delivering the commodity at maturity of the contract has a basket of bonds that are available for delivery. So the short position has a choice as to which bond to deliver. The bonds have different features. And it is the conversion factor that is used to determine what's the price received for each of the bonds and roughly equalizes that choice that the short position has in the contract. <laughs> Hello there, I'm back after a brief break and I pick up where I left off, which is topic three of the FRM, specifically interest rate futures contract. We're here like to illustrate what we know is a tricky idea for new learners and that is the conversion factor, oftentimes just abbreviated CF on the futures contract for a US treasury bond. So this is Hull's two examples. He give he gives two bonds to illustrate how the conversion factor is computed. However, the concept is actually simpler than it looks, and that is that the conversion factor is set equal to the quoted price the bond would have per dollar of principal on the assumption that the interest rate for all maturities equals 6% per annum. So that's the simple rule. Really, I think of it as just having three parts. The first step is rounding to rounding down to three months on the maturity. And then we're looking for the quoted price of the bond. If we assume that the we have a flat yield curve at 6%, right? So all these rules do is round the bond maturity down to three months and obtain the quoted price, not the cash price, assuming a flat yield curve of 6%. Why do we even need to compute the conversion factor? Well, remember, this is a futures contract where the underlying commodity is the U.S. Treasury bond. And in this case, in order to avoid a liquidity crunch, so for a very good reason, the short position is given a choice as to which bond to deliver as part of the futures contract among a basket of bonds. And we say that that short position being self-interested would naturally select the cheapest to deliver. And that's why you see the cheapest to deliver. The cheapest to deliver is a concept because the short position has a choice among different bonds with different features. But of course, some of these bonds in the viable basket are worth more than another. In Hull's example here, all other things being equal, the bond with a 10% coupon is worth more than the bond with the 8% coupon. So it's not as if we can say each of them have a value of 100 for 100 face. The conversion factor is used to translate the bond under these assumptions into the price that the short would receive to roughly standardize all of the different choices. So you can see here, the conversion factor is gonna be higher for this first, first bond, which has a higher coupon. So the short position will roughly get credit. However, the cheapest to deliver concept applies because this is an approximation. It's not gonna exactly standardize all of the bonds. They should be, the choice should be a tough choice to make for the short, but it's not, they're not gonna be exactly equal. So we still say that among those roughly equivalent choices after we standardize or roughly neutralize the different, there still will be a slightly cheapest to deliver bond. I'll cover that in the next video. But so, keeping in mind that we have a simple rule here, quoted price at 6% yield, rounding down to 3%, I hope then that makes the rules of the two bond a lot easier to digest. Which is to say here, in the first example, bond one, is a straight, I'm a straight copy of a replication of John Hull's example in chapter six. Um, the first bond has a maturity of 20 years and two months, right? So notice that's meant to be realistic. Oftentimes in bond pricing, especially as we're learning, we're, we're typically given uh, maturities that are unrealistically round. We're typically told two years, 20 years or 19.5 years. 
So we're, we're all in semi-annual compounding here. That's the other implicit assumption there. 6% yield with semi-annual compounding. But Hull has given us two bonds with more realistic maturities that are not exactly at the six-month intervals. So face value of 100, in this case 10% coupon. And notice I extra yellow highlighted the yield assumption because this is the basic underlying assumption of standardizing these different bonds that are in the available to deliver viable basket. The basic assumption is a flat 6% yield curve. So that's why I've got this in yellow as an input. I wouldn't really change that if I'm computing conversion factors. The maturity is 20 years and two months. So that's 20.17 in years in decimal format. And that first step, yeah, I'm just using an Excel function here. That first step in the three steps we saw is to round the maturity down to the nearest three months. So 20 years and two months becomes around 20 years. And now the round 20 years, then in this case, be, because with the first coupon is assumed to be paid in six months. So this is the rounding that's convenient to us. It rounds to a clean six month interval, in this case, 20 years or 40 semi-annual or six month periods. The first coupon is presumed to receive in six months. In other words, we're in a typical bond pricing situation. So notice I skip all of these in my spreadsheet and go right down to basically a straight up present value calculation in Excel that we could also replicate in the calculator easily. And so this bond with a 6% yield and 10% coupon, uh, let me clarify, a 6% semi-annual yield, meaning 6% per annum with semi-annual compound frequency, its price would be $146.43, straight up bond calculation. And just as a gut check, um, I might look at this and say, okay, the coupon is greater than the yield. I do expect this bond, in this case, the coupon significantly higher than the yield. I do expect this bond to price at a premium, at a significant premium. So I am consistent there. Okay, then the conversion factor, you'll notice, just divides in this case by the face value of 100. And this is mirror scaling. We're used to seeing 146 because, well, we don't say it this way, but really, a price of 146.43 is really implicitly $146 per 100 face ballot, per per 100 face dollars. The conversion factor specifically is set equal to the quoted price the bond would have per dollar, not per $100. See that really subtle difference, but not really profound difference such that these are equal, their only difference is the division of 100. And so we have the conversion factor here for bond one, which is the more convenient bond because bond two has a maturity of 18 years and four months, and this time a coupon of 8%. And again, part of the rule really here is the 6% yield, I don't change that. Again, I still have a coupon higher than yield, so I am still expecting a, pri a premium priced outcome here and a conversion factor therefore that is above one. So by the way, if my coupon is below 6%, I'm expecting a conversion factor that's below one. Okay, so my maturity in decimal form is 18 years and a third. And again, that first rule is rounding down the maturity to the nearest three months. I get 18.25. And now if you've been doing bond pricing calculations, uh, bond pricing exercises with the calculator, you know that you will have figured out that 18.25 years is not actually convenient to the calculator when we're using semi-annual compounding because we're not, 18.0 is convenient, 18.5, but 18.25 means we're actually right in between the two coupon settlement dates. So, 
the bond calculator gives us a clean price that where the full equals the flat price or the cash equals the quoted price. But here we uh, we're in a little bit uh, we're in a, we're in between settlements, so it's actually extra step for us. Okay, so having rounded down. In this case, the first coupon is received instead of in six months, it's received in three months. So here, I'm not gonna go into my calculations here because I just wanna get the concept, and I've got the link where you can download the spreadsheet and fully follow my um, calculations here on your own in Excel. But all we do here is we're computing the full price at today plus three year plus three months sorry the first coupon in three months so the full price of this bond in three months forward is 100 was 125.832 and again full price is a synonym we could also say cash or dirty price but the conversion factor wants the flat price also called the quoted or the clean price okay but first we have to discount it back to today so all this all we do here is discount the full price in three months to the full price today now we have the full price in my previous video i've covered uh full versus flat and accrued interest so at this point you, you probably know that to retrieve the flat price from the full price we just subtract the accrued interest in this case, it's a round, it, it's a clean $2 because our coupon is 8% per annum. That means really $8 per year, which is, so half of that, $4 on each coupon date, but we're exactly halfway through the settlement. So that's half of $4 or $2. So I have the calculation in there, but by subtracting $2 from the full price today, we get the flat price today, and so that's what's used. And again, that's a more familiar flat price per $100 of face value, such that dividing by 100 gives us the uh, conversion factor. Again, coupons higher than yield, so we are expecting a conversion factor above one, but it's not as high as bond one. So if this short if this short position in the uh, futures contract has, if in the available basket, would have several bonds, including one and two, uh, you can see the conversion factor here will, get, will appropriately give more credit to this bond that is more valuable. So if you want to look at those calculations here, that's the basic implementation of the decision rule. If you want to look at the calculations, I'll put the link on the spreadsheet, and I hope that's helpful. If it is helpful, this is part of a playlist and a channel. Please uh, subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.